welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Uh, today we're going, the topic of the day is about uh, fifth dimension. So we're going to get into that in details. And as always, uh, we're going to do a grounding meditation just uh, to get us settled in this moment, helping us to get rid of the noises up here and uh, get us ready to hear, listen, be able to receive. A lot of times we're listening, uh, but we're not hearing. So it's really important that we get grounded and we are centered and we can hear and receive the transmission and the wisdom that comes to us. So what I would like you to do is I want you to imagine that from your root chakra, I'm going to show you um, a very, very simple meditation. Like as you're sitting right now, where you're at, you can, you may want to just touch the ground, the floor with your feet and connect your feet to the earth, the ground. And um, imagine that as you're breathing, there is prana, uh, energy of planet Earth is entering into your feet and you feel as you're breathing that the prana of uh, the, the planet is spiraling through your feet and gently moving up to your knees, to your legs and it's emerging from your both feet both legs emerging to one point and the energy comes to your sacrum. Go ahead, take a deep breath as you breathe in. And feel ting the tingling, feel an energy build up that it's starting coming up from your feet, moving up. Connecting everything together till this energy, these two columns of spiraling energy moving up from both feet to your caps and to your knees and then moving up through your legs and joining each other at those in your sacrum. And you may even feel a tingling when that happens. So this is at your root chakra. And the light bulb goes on. And you take another deep breath. And the energy spiraling up and Gently coming up to your second chakra, which is below your belly button around that area, gets connected to that. And as you're just breathing in and out effortlessly, This energy moves up to your third chakra, which is your stomach. At this point, as the energy is spiraling, it's bringing your gut into balance creates 
a balance in your gut and gently the energy begin to move higher as you're breathing in and out without really putting an effort into it you're not trying to force anything push anything you're simply available you're st simply breathing in and out you're not forcing anything to happen you're allowing for this powerful life force energy to do its own thing without any manipulation now the energy is moving up and it comes to your heart center heart chakra And the energy continues to spiral up coming to your fifth chakra your throat so by now when you're looking within you see that this energy has been spiraling coming from your from the center of the earth entering into your feet going through your legs coming to your root chakra and gently moving up connecting all these five chakras to each other it's at the fifth chakra and now it's moving to your sixth chakra which is your third eye balancing everything and then from as you breathe in and out this energy as it's spiraling up it reaches your crown chakra and gently going through your crown chakra and shooting up into space into the sky from earth below to the sky above And now you are a conduit, you're a vessel, it's like, you're like a, a vessel, the energy is spiraling through you. You're simply a vehicle, it's like you're a brush in the hand of the master painter. your pen in the hand of the master her majesty the supreme intelligence is using your body as a as a tool you're nothing you're not doing anything you're simply being used
Yeah, just drop into gently breathing in and out and allow this energy to do its magic. Allow it to travel through you. without any manipulation. No need to force anything. A powerful intelligence is at work here. Perfectly aware of all of your needs. And connecting all the dots together on its own. Just dive into the mystery without trying to find anything out. Without even trying to know, you're simply dissolving into the oneness. Dissolving into the moment, this moment, which is rich. Dissolving into the nothingness. From something to nothing.
Silence is gold. Slowly, slowly come back. Slowly, slowly. And as you're coming back, you feel this connection that you are a tool in between heaven and earth, that your chakras are balanced, energy has been spiraling through you rebalancing everything and as a result of that you will have a sense of equilibrium that you are grounded you're balanced you're present and you're not haunted by your ups and downs of your emotions and thoughts you feel centered. Focused. Available, present here. Being available to life. 
being available in this moment. Simply being here. Here is very safe. Here is nothing is happening here in this in this place. Here, this moment, detached from all previous moments and not connected to any future moments. Right now, here. And when we're here and we're not engaged with our thought process, we get a very good glimpse of our fifth dimensional self. A fifth dimension that's very popular and a lot of people talk about it. 5D, 5th dimension. And a lot of people um, in spiritual community, they're talking about that uh, right now, humanity on a verge of uh, transcending to 5th dimension, to 5th dimensional consciousness. And uh, it's on the horizon of our evolution, and that is what's going on. Uh, but I'm going to get into this and explain it in details. The people believe or they think that by entering into the fifth dimensional consciousness, um, you can still carry your old ways with you. And as if fifth dimension is a geographical place and by entering into the fifth dimensional consciousness you can hang on to everything you have but they they view it as a utopian kind of a lifestyle that we're entering into uh, a world that everything's in it in, is perfect. And so we just evolve into this. But what's being really missed is the misunderstanding of what is it we're looking for by entering into fifth dimension? Thinking that you can have your old patterns. You can have your Tesla. You can have your house in, here and your vacation home in uh, Spain and your 401k and your savings and everything and... and um, your business and you do whatever you're doing and then you just everything is exactly the way it is but now you have transformed into a utopian lifestyle and in this utopian life, lifestyle you know it's all brotherly love and everything goes right and there is no sickness and there's no disease and um, there's politically or uh, everything is just fine the way the way they're imagining it to be. So it's kind of a an image of this life without the bad stuff. So you only have the good stuff from this life.
but nothing else. So, but it's just, that's not how it is, simply. Because in order to reach a higher level of consciousness, you have to let go of something. Something that doesn't work in a higher level of consciousness. And, and that's you. We we have to get rid of you in order to enter into this other level. The idea of you cannot be there because that's the very problem. The idea of who you think you are is the very problem. So now entering into fifth dimension without you. And you may be thinking, okay, how can I arrive in this level of consciousness without me? Well, that me is what's the prob what is the problem and is holding you back. Because fifth dimension and fifth dimensional consciousness is not a geographical place on the map that you go to. It's a shift. In, it's an expansion. It's a shift of your view. That's how you perceive things. Your perception starts to change. But that's with anything in spiritual world, spiritual work. It's a perception. It's an expansion in your opening your mind to a new way, opening, going beyond what you're imagining. Your imagination of this utopian state is a, a product of your mind. Your mind is creating it. So you're imagining of a place outside of here, something which is in your point of view is perfect. Examine it. Check it out for yourself right now. Don't take my word. Just right now, take a moment and imagine fifth dimension. And you will see that your mind is constructing an idea of something that is appealing to you. Something that, in your opinion, is there's harmony in it everything is good and that in your imagination is fifth dimension am i making any sense does it does it does anyone here with me right so again we are imagining of something with our thinking mind of a certain type of lifestyle that's to our to our image that in that life everything goes right again everything goes right for you and you're very happy why you're happy because everything is the way you want it to be you understand you get it so but that's not how it is because you are still there or the idea of you which is a thought that separates you from that which you want it's still there so in order to reach this state of consciousness we have to get rid of you sorry So then you may say, well, is it, then if you're going to get rid of me, then how do we get to this place? How do I reap the benefits and the fruits of, of this place? Well, let's understand. Let's find out what is fifth dimension. These different levels in this 
uh, states of consciousness, it's an expansion and in an explosion that has taken inside you that you have expanded, you have opened up to a much bigger part of yourself in this realization to realize your the vastness of the being. How vast is the being? How vast? And in, in that vastness, it cannot be contained, it can't be understood by the thinking mind because the thinking mind is still limited. It's thinking through this box. It's got limitations. The mind can understand the infinite. What's infinity? I remember I was six years old and we had this discussion with my brother sister. And I love those conversations. I was six, seven years old. We were talking about, I was asking him, the three of us lying down outside at night uh, on one big bed, all three of us looking into the sky, looking at the stars. This is a long time ago. And then I'm asking him, I'm six years old, and my brother's sisters, they were five, five and ten years older than me. And I would say, well, what's, what's beyond this? How far does it go? And I remember my sister said, it's infinite. It keeps going. I said, well, where did it start? Who started it? And where does it end? And they were telling me that there is no start and there is no end. It just keeps going. But my mind could not understand it. The mind can't get it because it's a three-dimensional mind. There's always a beginning in it and it's an end. It, it simply doesn't have the ability to comprehend infinite. So years after, when I started to get a glimpse of it, of entering into the fifth dimensional consciousness and getting glimpses of a unified field, a field. Just imagine you're in a just solid field of just flowers or grass. You can imagine that. Or imagine it's only ocean. You're on it's blue turquoise water and that's all there is there's no beach and there's no sky it's just blue turquoise flat beautiful water and nothing else now you have nothing to compare it against because that's the only thing there is the fifth dimensional consciousness entering into a unified field of love, a unified field of nothingness, oneness. Again, these are words, so I'm going to try to put it in different angles. So maybe, you know, you get it, you get it or it clicks for you, right? I, I will use different examples because they're pointers. You're pointing out at something which is unexplainable. You cannot explain it because language is limited and in, in explaining this uh, translation gets lost. But you enter into a unified field of love, a unified field of the being and that's all there is. And there is no duality in it. It simply is. And there's only one. There's one presence. So your consciousness, your awareness starts to expand and opening up from 
a limited perspective and an expansion and as it's opening up opening up opening up it's like wow I mean this thing is keeps going from every direction from up and down left and right it keeps going and going and going and by entering into it something has to give something has to give by entering into that and that is like you have this glass of water and and the water wants to join rejoin the ocean it wants to go back into the ocean so you're pouring it into the ocean and once it's poured all the way into the ocean you cannot find it anymore you cannot find this much water it's impossible it's gone it's the ocean now so it loses that individuality or that sense of individuality it loses its sense of separation into the oneness now it's the one And that's what happened and happens to anyone who reached full realization, full awakening. Any human being on this planet that they realize themselves. They came to an awakening, a full realization their body's still here their character is still here they still have physical needs they still t you know it's not like they came to a full realization and now they're stupor and they're like a zombie no they continue living their lives but that identification of the separation is is lost so that in that water inside them that thing that appeared to be a separate entity that one has merged into the the one consciousness yet you may still see the glass because the guy is not dead he's walking around he's alive but from the perspective of an outsider it still appears that it's separated there's an appearance of separation but the dude who was in there its consciousness merged into the one it merged into the fifth dimension so it no longer is, no longer has that identity even though on the outside it appears to have that identity it looks like it to everybody else but inside it it doesn't have that identity anymore because we simultaneously we are multidimensional beings we're not these in your mind naturally you think and you're experienced and that is you're not to be blamed for it so don't blame yourself for this because this is your experience and your experience is to be separated everything else is it indicates that everything around you supports this idea that you are someone you're a person that you are 
separate it from everything else. That you have to look after yourself all the time. You're responsible for your action. That you have this mind and you got your desires and you can use your mind and you can use your de your desires are like chariots to your to your uh, carriage and they're pulling you and you can accomplish this and you can accomplish that and and you want this and you want that and you don't want this and you don't want that so everything it indicates and reinforce fortifies the this part of you that you are a separated entity and bewildered lost and in this separation it comes all these emotional stuff and since we have not had any zero training in this area so we keep growing up and we're becoming adults we're in a society a community a system that blinds blind man is leading other blinds so you have nothing to compare anything to it's a system that it fails and it keeps failing over and over again and it does not produce enlightened people it doesn't produce buddhas it produces needy people it produces damaged products and you look around and everything else looks the same so you don't doubt it you just kind of roll with it but for a very small p uh, number of human beings or the slaves or the particles of this system or the characters in this system something triggers in and there is a calling it comes deep from a part of you that knows and that part of you is your multi-dimensional being the part that resides in your in fifth dimension you may call it your intuitive knowing your higher self you may say, okay, I'm channeling uh, by entities, beings from other planets or other dimensions or saints or my grandfather or whatever, or my guru, my teacher is channeling through me. But it's basically you're deriving your information from this other part of you that simultaneously it's a multi-dimensional being so it's residing in all dimensions as it is here but your awareness your consciousness is very focused on this one so this has become your reality now this one is deeply involved with basic stuff and hasn't learned how to rise above it its biggest hang-up is good and bad so it lives its life based on what's good and what's bad what I what I like what I don't like what's right right what's wrong so it hasn't been able to rises above what's right and what's wrong so it's stuck there And because its perspective is about right and wrong, naturally, it has to suffer. It goes through a lot of disappointments because it, it, it comes to contact with what's wrong and doesn't like it. But when the mind starts to, to lose its grip, and it starts to open in this opening an expansion starts to take place 
and gradually we begin to get glimpses of our fifth dimensional self now whether you're in deep meditation you're in deep meditation and you disappear your idea of who you are disappears your mind goes into silence and your mind goes to silence you're still alive you're still here you still have a body but you're not identifying with it there's no identification with it in that period of time let's say half an hour one hour of deep meditation you may say i was in a state of samadhi i was gone i was one with god that period of time is when the mind quiets down and the mind is not in between so everything the clouds go away it's like you're here you're trying to look at this you're looking into the sky and it's full of clouds so you can't look at the sun you can't see the blue sky but now the mind goes the clouds go away and all of a sudden you're just staring at sunshine sun shining and the blue sky you can see that everything you say wow the clouds are gone and now it's clarity clarity is there you can see it and the same thing here the mind goes away means your story too your struggles your problems the world what's going to happen what's going to happen to me what happened to me before blah 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 everything is gone and now there's nothing in between it's just unity and that must have happened to you otherwise you wouldn't be here none of us would be here interested in this conversation you would be doing what your sister is doing you would be doing what your friend your your mom doing or your best friend doing a lot of the people you know who have no interest in this you would be one of them you would be doing that zero interest in this but you're interested in this something's pulling you something is got you and now you can't imagine life without this because the other one you find it empty and this one it's fire it's the fire in your heart it's burning and you can't wait for more because it's juicy it's your life force it's really giving you hope and wanting to live and wanting to go deeper by getting glimpses and touching it connects it connects what does it connect yes you're getting glimpses of your fifth dimensional self you're getting you're getting contacts of it and how ever short period of time that connection may be but it's strong enough and juicy that pulls the trigger and you fancy it and it vibrates it's like a powerful vibrator is like whoosh, you don't know wow you know and what happens it brings this really deep sense of peace because when you come in touch with this 
and you connect this anxiety, this nervousness, this fire, this tingling, this weirdness in the world that you're left out, you're on your own and nothing can really protect you because yeah, you put your blanket around, you know, you have your job, you have your finances, you got your savings, your second home and third home and maybe you gather your kids around you, your friends around you, your family, your dog, your cat, you know, you get more cats and more dogs and you get all these things, you try to hang on to these things so you, f you feel secure but the things it's just give you partial security but then all of a sudden another news come about coronavirus or a new one a new version of it that this one is definitely going to kill half of the population and everything is down the tube everything that you set up around yourself to make you calm and quiet is gone now you're back into this turmoil So the turmoil, the inner turmoil, is what is ripping you into pieces. Or whatever that is. And then as we're getting older, it gets worse. Because most of us are going to find ourselves being alone. You're getting older. People are leaving. The world is changing. You feel left out. You feel lost. The new generation, the computer revolution, there's a new language has come and you don't even understand this new language. And so now you feel more left out. You can't find any securities in it because it's just simply not there. No matter how hard you're going to be struggling, hanging on to it, it's not there. And then betrayal starts to happen. You get betrayed. Betrayal after betrayal after betrayal. Everything starts failing you. Your body starts failing you. You're hanging in there really hard. You're a tough cookie. But everything starts to fall apart. No matter how hard you're trying. Everything, there's something new. Everything, every day. One day is all of a sudden your eyes, they're not seeing very well. Okay, you're going to start fixing those. The next thing is something weird starts happening on your face and it's twitching. It's twitching. So you fix those things. Then something else starts to happen. Every day there is something. But then you start connecting to this place. And all of a sudden, all of these worries, all these problems, all these things that are troubling you, they disappear. They're not there. Because you start to access your fifth dimensional self. You're accessing this other part of yourself, which is wisdom. It's quiet. It's the master. It's unattached. And you may find it in someone. 
Okay, and you want to be like that. But if you're lucky, then the spark will force you to recognize it inside yourself. That it's here. And if you are determined, you're not fooling around. It does take determination. You just have to get focused on it. and dive into it deeper and then it starts getting activated it starts to it's a revolution because the more you focus on it your attention starts to go on it so your attention from all these external blah 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 that all the way up to now, again, this is not your fault because you had no education. No one ever told you anything about it. You had to figure this out on your own. It's like you're having a child and the child doesn't come with a manual. There is no manual. You're just mom, your sister, your friends are telling you what to do, but you don't know what the hell to do. How do I raise a child? How do I react to them when they piss me off? I told my six-year-old 50 times, don't close that door like that. And he still does it. Now I just get angry and yell at him or I have to slap his wrist or whatever. How do I deal with it? You don't know how to deal with it because they don't give you a manual what to do. It's not like you went and bought a new Toyota and it came with its manual of how to deal with it. You have no idea how to deal with it. So it's very confusing. Same thing here. You don't know what to do, but you know you need to do something. And something from inside is pulling you in that direction. So, Entering into the fifth dimensional realm, again, what is it? It is a realm of oneness. It's one, and there is no second one. There's nothing else in there. It's just one. But in verbal explanation, when I say you enter into this universal or to this unified field of love without the illusion of duality. Nice fancy words. But most people don't understand what the hell Zarathustra you're talking about. What the hell? What is fifth dimension? A unified field of love without the illusion of duality. The illusion of duality. What is the illusion of duality? This world. An illusory world, a dream world, that seems separated. Everything is separated from everything. It's a dream world. But in its essence, there is no separation. It's happening by one dreamer that's dreaming it. And the same thing, entering into this realm of fifth dimensional consciousness, what happens to you in layman man, layman's man language? What happens is you, in a very simple way, you experience a deep peace, a deep peaceful state, because your mind drops, 
your mind gives you a break. And what happens is you experience the being yourself. You enter, like what did I, what did we do in the beginning of the meditation? I said, don't really try to make anything happen. Just simply dive into being. Because your being, it is coming from fifth dimension. So when you dive back into just simply being without any mental activities, without any sort of engagement with your emotions and no investment in these emotions, then vastness takes over. And as a result of that is you feel really good. You feel peaceful. You feel love. You begin to get bliss, blissed out. You feel the bliss. The more your mind becomes quiet, the more you just in this place that you feel, and it's different than romantic love, human love. I'm not talking about that. This is deeper. This is in the underlying. Those other stuff happens on the surface. This is the underlying fabric of it. So the mind starts to evaporate because it's just thoughts. It has no substance. It has no weight. It's just thoughts. The mind starts to evaporate and you begin to get a glimpse of the presence which is inside you, your fifth dimensional self, and you're encountering the truth of who you are. The truth of who you are. Pure presence, pure being. All these other stuff, they're attachments to it. All your stories, your thoughts, your past, everything else, everything from the future, these are just stories attached to it. It's not the real thing. The real thing doesn't have any story. It simply is. It doesn't have an agenda. It's not even trying to go anywhere. Your fifth dimensional self, your true self, is not evolving into anything or regressing to something else. It simply is here. So when you drop your story and you're able to quiet your mind, you begin to experience it and it's juicy. It's alive. It's happening. And you're like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Oh my God. Yeah, it is. And it's in you. It's yourself. You just can't let go of your story. That's your problem. You're too stuck in there. You're too attached and addicted to your story. And that's why I'm here to cut your head off. If you get close, I'm going to cut your head off. And you're going to go without your story. That's my job. And you may think I'm your friend. Oh, I really love him. He's my friend. I'm not your friend. Don't ever make that mistake. I'm not your friend because I would never ever support your story. I have one job and my job is to cut your head off. Means to destroy your story and the illusion that you live in. So we're not friends. 
I may act like I am, but don't get fooled when I pull my sword out and cut your head off. Eventually you will thank me. There's no friendship here. Leave it. There's only one job. One mission. I know you're smiling and you're doing your head like this. I get it. But you have no idea I'm coming after you. So, you got to drop your story that you're dearly hanging on to it. This beautiful plastic bag with full of garbage, which is your story, that you keep carrying it. That's what's keeping you away. And that story also ideas, whatever ideas you have of how the world should be, or how things should be. Or we go into a, this romantic ideas of the spiritual seekers that they're so stuck all over the world. I feel sorry for them. They're so stuck, worse than mainstream people. Mainstream people are deep sleep. Spiritual seekers, it's in a second sort of a sleep. It's a second type of conditioning which is worse than the other conditioning. Because now the ego has taken over and hiding itself beyond a nice orange robe, you know, with the mala, you know, has its crystals and it's got its feathers and it's doing shamanic work and wants to heal the world and help other people. Oh, this one is really more stuck than the other one. The other one doesn't even know what's up. This one is in deep shit. Because its ego has re-emerged as the healer or whatever. You got to drop that story too. It's a story in your head. It's an ego. It's a perception. This entire awakening business is a perception it's a perception it's how you're perceiving it the entire story of good and bad is another perception because you're conditioned to believe what's right what's good, what's, what's not good, what's right, what's wrong. And now all these belief systems, they're holding you back from really truly experiencing your true self, your power, the love which is inside you derives from peace. So fifth dimension is not a place. It's not a utopian place. It's just, again, it's your perception. It's your imagination of an image you would like to support and you would like. And that's planted in your mind, too. You've been brainwashed, spiritual brainwashed. It's another form of brainwash. So you can't become free. 
to get free, you have to go beyond all of it. You have to reject everything. All ideas, all concepts. Because all these concepts and these ideas are thought forms. They're thoughts being a slave in slavery of your mind. It's much easier to control minds than to control the bodies. Controlling bodies cost money. There is resistance because there has to be concentration camps or there have to be structural camps, something that you're forced to do, to be there and do this. It's so much easier to control your mind so you're willingly doing things. So if you want freedom, don't look outside in the world because the ones you're looking for, they, they don't have a clue. They're lost too. They can't create freedom for you by creating a utopian world. They're stuck too. You got to go beyond your mind. It's an inside job. Internally. Become free. Free from all thoughts. Holy thoughts or dark thoughts. It doesn't matter. No thoughts. into silence freedom from all thoughts by exercising what you have inherited from the time you were born and you dive back into that place, you turn towards the source. And you dive in. And in that, you hit something. And then all of a sudden, peace comes and bliss becomes your reality of the moment. And you have entered into your fifth, into the fifth dimension. It has nothing to do with the outside world. And to your surprise, you may discover you're still driving your Tesla and you're still having your second house in Spain. And you still have your savings. But you're not looking for them to bring you comfort. Because they don't bring you comfort. They stress you out. Because you're trying to figure out how to save them. You have discovered something far, far more deeper, far, far more with value. No one can ever take it from you. You can be prisoned, tortured, beaten up, raped, killed, everything, and it's still there.
And the good news is you can do it because there have been people before you who have done it. And that's great relief. And you're touching it. When we come together and we dive into silence, I know in my heart that you're touching it. I know in my heart you're getting a glimpse of it. And that happens through meditation. It happens through tantra sexuality. When you're making love to your partner and it's a tantric make love, you dive into that place. That's why sex is such a dangerous thing and it has to be shameful and associated to guilt and fear and must be driven, pushed to go underground and turn into wicked ways. That's why, because it's one of the most powerful ways to reach fifth dimensional self through tantric, se tantric sexuality. So it was very quickly identified as the pathway to awakening. So it, it got shut down very fast. And guess what they do to you from your childhood? What they tell you? You don't, you, it's so deeply rooted in you that you're even afraid to talk about it. You don't even bring the word. And if I bring the word, you just get uncomfortable and start moving around. Yet, uh, most of your life, you've been thinking about it. You've been dreaming about it. Even if you've been married and in love with one person, you think about it with other people. You know what I'm talking about. That's a one. There are other ways. There are substances that also help you get a glimpse of the fifth dimensional self. There is different ways. It happens sometimes at childbirth. A mother is giving birth and in that extreme pain and intensity of the labor, she taps into silence. She taps into this other higher dimension of herself, which is pure, pure, it's silent, it's blissful. There's nothing there, it's just is. I'm sure some of you who've given birth have experienced that. Not everybody, but some do. I can't say I have. But if you haven't, ask around. Ask your friends. They will, some of them will tell you that during that very intensity of giving birth, they went into this place. Yeah? Katie, you're nodding your head, so you must, you must, I will unmute you in a moment after I'm done and we talk about it. So there's different ways. Or you, let's say you are an athlete or you're running and you go into the zone and you lose yourself into the act of running. And you become one with your shoes. You become one with the road. And then all of a sudden you're in this blissful state, place. Running is happening, but you're not doing it. 
Some of you like music, musicians, you're playing music. That happens to a lot of artists. You're singing or you're playing an instrument and you lose yourself into the instrument, the music and the sound. You lose your sense of separation into the oneness. You dive into your fifth dimensional presence and beautiful music starts to be produced, expressed, but no one is doing it. You're no longer playing your instrument because you become one with your instrument and the sound. You lose yourself. Or let's say you're painting, you're drawing. I've talked to many people who draw and paint. Four hours go by, all of a sudden they don't know. Four hours went by and they produced this beautiful piece of art and I have no idea how it happened. Because they dissolve, they go beyond the mind into the field, the unified field of oneness into that. So, to sum it up, we're all multidimensional beings. We all have one foot in fifth dimension as well as third dimension and other places. And of course, dark dimensions. You have access to all of them because you are all of them. Katie, yeah. <laughs> tell me. Yeah, but with um, my daughter, uh, gosh, she's like 35, she's going to be 35 in um, December. Um, I had a really difficult uh, you know delivery c-section emergency and my thank god my mom was there with me in the operating room and I was, of course I was cracking jokes and they're giving me all these crazy stuff but they put me under um, to, to get my daughter out um, and I just remember um, just a total silence of with the pain and everything and it's like my body just kind of lifted out of you know my spirit just lifted out and i'm just like seeing all this stuff but mm. you know what i mean and and then i went back and i thought i was gonna lose her my daughter um you know she wasn't breathing and i'm just going you know, God just, you know, you could take me, but don't take my daughter. See what I mean? And I'm just, um, just saying that and saying that. And then they finally got her breathing. And then I went right. back into my body. Okay. But, um, so, but you had a glimpse and a I period had, that you went into this pure silence. That. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Through the pain, you know, the, right. the pain left. And I'm yeah, just, right. You know, and with the running, I was a runner and did sports and soccer, actually. And when I get on the field, I'm one, you know, with running. And it's just like I'm in another place and time. And with sports, especially, and, and paint, you know, my, you know, I draw. And like you say, time just flies when you're in that... God's space. That's yes. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you're you are beyond time and space. Yeah, you just kind of you know, and yeah. then you come back. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, everything gets drawn you you become much bigger than all of it. It it's like a like a expansion like you were saying for a time and it's in in this dimension or space and then it just comes right back when, and with the music too, I played my dulcimer, you know, like a harp, 
and I get in, it's almost you get in a groove, like people, you know, musicians, everybody, oh, we get in a groove. Well, the groove is, like you said, the higher dimension, and it just, you're one with God and the divine, and it just kind of, it's just messages coming in to play, you know, or paint, or sports, or run, or, you know, like I say, just listen, and it will, you know, just let it go. You have to let go. Beautiful. Thank, thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Miss Susanna. Questions? I didn't, but I want to say something anyway. Please. I, uh, after that, but, uh, what you were talking today about one has to ask what's the purpose of all of it right um did, so, did I, yeah go ahead yeah it's just like uh you coming to this question what is the purpose of the life then uh because if you need to come back to what you came from so why you need to be trapped in it right and this may be can be another topic for another uh, Wednesday, but this is what I was thinking about. Yeah, why to just be bothered? So, you know, well, uh, not that I yeah. will be suicidal, but some people can be, uh, you know, just tired of all of it. Like, why I need to be just, uh, you know, in this, in this, and not to just check out earlier. Right. Well, I mean, it's like Holy Hotel California. You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. Yeah, where I'm going then? Why I need to come to this, you know, brother, right. um, like... Uh, what why, why are you here on this planet? Why do you have to come to this life? Yeah, why? To suffer, right? I don't believe that this is the... I'm, no, I'm just repeating what you're saying so my audience can understand your question. So I'm just kind of... No, I'm just saying why yeah. we need to come back to that if we're already coming from something, what, is, what we need to... Oh, okay. Why, why do we have to go back to fifth dimension if we're coming from fifth dimension, right? Yeah, so what's the meaning then in between, yeah? yeah? Right, exactly. That that was kind of good. What's the meaning in between? It was kind of like an Italian saying. <laughs> What's yeah. the meaning in between? Then <laughs> <laughs> what Right, right, exactly. Yeah, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. That's a very, very valid question. I was six or seven years old when I was asking that question. Yeah, me too. I, I didn't wondering. get the answer. Right. So you want me to answer that in 30 seconds? No, no. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you that. Let me, I'm going to answer that question in 30 seconds, okay? I mean, that is a question that has been brought up by a lot of people, philosophers and spiritual seekers from all over the world throughout human history. So your question is very valid, but you're not the first person asking it and wondering, but it's very, very valid. But let me answer you this. Let me ask you this question, with, which is the answer to your question, okay? And I'm not trying to cop out and getting out of trying to answer. Is when you're absolute silence, when you're in this place, when we do meditate together, do you ever go to this super groovy, silent, blissful place? Every Are time. Ever, every time? Okay. So when you're in this place, during, in that duration, okay? So let's say you have your ordinary life and then it comes to academy or we're meditating together 
Okay, I'm not saying it doesn't happen when you're doing it on your own. I'm just saying like here now. We're together at the academy and all of a sudden you're in this period of time between this and this, you're in absolute bliss state. You're gone. Okay? Are we on the same page? Are you with me? You're not with me? I lost I'm you. I'm not in the groovy, groovy place. If I already was touching it, I will have the answers. So okay, I hold am on. in the quiet no. mind. Good, good. Just one second. One minute. Let me, let me finish. When you go into this deep meditative place, when I say groovy, I mean like you go into this silent, blissful place, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you like it? Yes. Do you love it? Yes. Would you like to be in that space all the time? Yes. Yeah. In that space, does it ever come a question, why am I here on this planet? Or there's just bliss? It's just the bliss. Exactly. Huh. This is that, tricky. Yeah. That question does not exist when you are in this place. Only comes when you come out of that place. The question that why do we have to come here and experience these things and then go back to this, this why, that question only comes when you're not in your fifth dimensional groovy space. When you come out of it, you ask that question. But when you're in it, that question doesn't exist. I don't know what to say to that. There's nothing yeah. to say, right? Yeah, exactly. So, it is a phenomenon. It's, it's an, a question rises in the mind. Questioning the true nature of the absolute. But in absence of that question, there's only the absolute and there's nothing else. So that's a conditioned mind throwing something there, trying to disturb the apple cart when there is no problem. The problem is the mind. You bypass the mind. And then there is no questions and there is no answers. It simply is. There's no reason why we're here. Why do we come to this life? Why are we incarnating in this life? That's a thought, isn't it? It's a question. But if there is no mind, that question doesn't exist. As you begin to notice that, you also begin to see that a lifetime of slavery, being a slave, a lifetime to a conditioned mind that's creating all these things through thought forms. And by bypassing it, you enter into fifth dimension. That utopia is here already. And there are people who arrive there. And they live it right now in this moment in the same, occupying the same space 
as seven other seven billion other people. While the rest of them are in hell, some are in heaven. It's right here, right now. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's right here. It's so much closer to you than you can even imagine. It's closer than your breath. You're already swimming in it. It comes at glimpses right now. It's not constantly your every moment reality. It pops and it disappears. So you got the stuff and once in a while you tap into this. It turns around. It will turn around. It will become. The balance will shift and you will begin to experience more and more of being in that place and less and less being in the mind and then eventually it becomes your experience all the time and it takes over and you're already in a process right now it's happening right now but don't worry about the rest of the world Because that's another mind fuck. That's mind agitation. That's food for mind. That's mind fucking. Oh, well, what's going to happen? And da, 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 da. These are all activating your thoughts. That's why I said it before. You have to be selfish on this path. Really mind your own business. Just focus on your own work. Of, and by doing that, people are going to be affected by your presence. But just focus on the task. Because it's an inner job. Nobody else can do it for you. Your guide, your teacher, is guiding you in that direction leading you towards inner freedom. But it cannot take you there. You got you have to walk. Maybe in the next academy after or maybe during the retreat we talk about the Yani and an encounter with the Yani. Because those of us who've been lucky and had an encounter with the Yani, our paths completely changed. And we have been invited to the path of realization, self-awakening. Great. So we're coming to the end of our academy. I. It's funny, like an hour, 45 minutes goes by and it goes by like this. Thank you for joining me. It's nice to be with you. Our um, global self-awakening retreat begins this coming Saturday. So uh, if you want to have direct interaction, then I... Uh, would sign up through the Zoom so then we can see each other. We will be broadcasting it on Facebook and Instagram, uh, but I would, won't be able to interact with you on that. And we'll be recording all the sessions 
Everything will go on my YouTube channel, Zarathustra 5D. All the recordings will go on our podcast, Zarathustra 5D, and our Facebook channels. Uh, my website is Zarathustra.tv. This is a free online global self-awakening retreat. Uh, we do uh, donations are welcome. We appreciate you if you help. So we can turn the wheel and spread the wisdom to as many people as possible across the globe and make this available for also younger people. So helping them to find their way because it's very confusing for them. If it's confusing for you, can you imagine if you're 20 years old, how confusing things could be, 25 years old? It's very confusing. So, and there are a future. So we need to educate them so they don't fall into the trap. And their mind's not conditioned the way our minds are. So we can help them get liberated. Also, I'm uh, happy to announce that I would be offering uh, a four-day retreat in um, mid-November. Um, I haven't set up the date, but I decided it's going to be a self-awakening, discovering the master. It's a mastery self-awakening retreat that I will be offering it. So uh, I'll be putting it up hopefully by tomorrow or the day after it's going to be on my website. So we'll have that. But for the moment, we are going to be together for nine days. And that's going to be very powerful. I really look forward to it. I wanted it to be in the row. I didn't want to have any inter. I mean, you're welcome to cruise in and cruise out. Maybe you're, maybe you're not able to do the entire nine days. Uh, and that's fine. As long as just tap into the juice, tap into the energy. So, because there's powerful transmission happens. It is when the gateway opens up to fifth dimension and when the source, Her Majesty, the Supreme, comes through and channels, there's a very powerful transmission happens. And that transmission of silence is that which elevates our vibrations. Because we gather together in the name of God. We gather together as sannyasins. We're the monks on the path. We're the seekers of the truth. We all have a deep love of God. We're all one love. You can look and slice it any way you like. You can change the wording. I don't like God, spirit. I'm not looking for self-realization. I just want inner peace. Or I want to find my soulmate. Or I want more money. Or I want to manifest what I want in my life. Whatever is your definition of it is, if you come together and we meet up, then we have one thing in common. We all want to be loved and we all want to be accepted. And we all want a peaceful life, inner peace. It's a very common threat that runs among all of us. We all want to be ultimately happy. This is what we all want. Nobody on this planet will come and say, I don't want to be happy. They may have their wicked ways of it. Maybe they murder kids. Maybe they rape people. Maybe they steal. But they're still down deep looking for their way of reaching happiness in stealing or killing. But they still want to be happy. 
That is absolutely undeniable. There is no being coming to life not wanting to be happy. But the idea of happiness may be different, which is different. And in my youth, I realized that I want ultimate happiness. That happiness that doesn't come and go is always here. That happiness comes from a deep state of inner peace. Because it's not conditional. It has to be unconditional. It's got to be unconditionally peaceful. Regardless of what is going on in my surrounding. If I invest and base my happiness on what is going on in the world or in my surrounding or my relationships, then I'm in trouble because it's conditional. It must be unconditional and permanent free from everything. Therefore, you must derive it from your inner source. It has to come from your inner power. So we're going to de dive deep into that in the next nine days to build up the energy so we can raise our vibrations to a higher frequency by continuously coming into this unified field. And that's my intention. Nine days, every day, we come together and we tap into this unified field. I love you all, my brothers and sisters. So happy to be at your presence and to serve. Serve you.